As you know, it's a requirement of the 17th edition wiring regulations that voltage drop is verified during a periodic inspection. It's not a requirement for an initial verification because of course when we install new circuits we'd have calculated volt drop before we installed them. But if we go to a building that we've not seen before, voltage drop is, is obviously quite important and the values have changed as we know from 3% for lighting and 5% for anything else. Now the, one way of doing it is to measure it. So we take a measurement of the voltage at the supply end, at the origin of the supply, and we could then go to the furthest end of the circuit, ensure it's under load, and then take a, a measurement. Of course, we can subtract the two to find the volt drop. And that's not always a practical solution because you can't always ensure that the circuit is loaded up to its full potential. Sometimes that's quite difficult. However, because when we're doing a periodic inspection, we've got um, certain values on our certificates, we can use those values to help us in calculating volt drop. And for instance, on this certificate here, I've got various circuits. And if we take circuit four, we've got a 20 amp circuit wired in four mil with a 1.5 CPC. And we've got an R1 and R2 value of 0.71. That's all the information I need to calculate the volt drop in that circuit. So for a first instance, we can use R1 and R2. R1 and R2 is 0.71. The maximum current that could flow through this circuit is 20 amps because that's the rating of the protective device. But of course, we also know that the temperature of the conductor is going to rise when we pass a current through it. So although we've got our R1 and R2 values that are measured at room temperature, the values that we are given in, in the guidance notes are really 20 degrees for the, the milliohms per metre um, of a conductor. We know that our conductor temperature, if it rises by 5 degrees, the resistance will increase by 2%. We also know that most of our thermoplastic cable that we use is rated at 70 degrees. So if our cable goes from 20 degrees to 70 degrees, there's a rise in temperature of 50 degrees. There's 10 lots of 5 degrees in 50, as we know. So that means that there's 10 2%, which will give me an increase of 20% in the resistance of that cable. The multiplier to increase anything by 20% is 1.2. Now the good thing is we only need to remember 1.2, no other values particularly. Now if I multiply all three together, I've got the resistance times the current, which is really just Ohm's law, multiply it by 1.2, I'm going to end up with a value of 7.04 volts. Now clearly, that's far greater than the 5% I would be allowed for this circuit. 5% of 230 is 11.5 volts. But of course, what I'm using here is a resistance value of a 4 mil and a 1.5. To get the true value, I need to use 4 mil and 4 mil. I started with this first because of course, if I use R1 and R2 and the volt drop comes in under the permitted maximum, I needn't look any further because we don't need to record the actual volt drop, we're just verifying that the volt drop is going to be okay. In this instance, it fails, but I can do another calculation to get a more accurate value. It's quite a simple calculation. All I need to do is to divide the cross-sectional area of the live conductor or line conductor by the cross-sectional area of the line conductor plus the cross-sectional area of the CPC. I then need to multiply it by my R1 and R2 value, which I've got there. That's going to come out at around 0 0.51 ohms. 
This 0 0.51 ohms is the resistance of my CPC in this circuit. If I have an R1 and R2 of 0.71 and I take away 0 0.51, it gives me a resistance value of 0 0.2. 0 0.2 will be the resistance value of my line conductor. Of course, I've got a line and I've got a neutral. So the resistance of my 4 mil cable for line and neutral will be 0.2 plus 0.2, which equals 0.4 of an ohm. Now I can revert back to my old calculation, or my first calculation, using 0.4, because I've now got Rn plus R1. 0 0.4 times 20, the rating of the protective device, times 1.2 gives me a value of 9.6 volts, which is perfectly acceptable. It's a simple calculation. It saves dismantling the installation to find R1 and Rn. It's a useful tool for any electrician to have in his toolbox. It will save an incredible amount of time.